Welcome back, friends. Uh, suppression of Jesuits. Oh, yes, New Advent. They're always a nice source to consult for things. The political religious history of the society under Louis XIV centers around Jansenism. And we've talked a little bit about that, that, you know, you're not worthy enough. Remember that one bishop with, uh, uh, was it Brother Lawrence's time? I'd yeah, have to where he put a real mean face of Jesus in front of the tabernacles and he boasted that there were no uh, sacrilegious communions. That's because there weren't any communions at all. So that's a one way. That, that's one way of making sure there's no secular religious communion. Yes. 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 Um, Blaise Pascal published his first of his provincials, the five propositions of Jensenism, having be it will be condemned by papal authority. Pascal could no longer defend them openly, and found the fourth. The most effective method of re retaliation was satire, raillery, and counter countercharge against the society. So you see, there is this, it's not like this pure relig uh, science is off and they're just doing chemistry and physics and mathematical. Oh no, it's intertwined with uh, the church and the faith in, in Pascal's case uh, with the Jesuits. Uh, so, the cause of the Jesuits was compromised by the various quarrels of Louis the Fourteenth with Innocent the Eleventh, especially concerning the Regale and the Gallican Articles of 1782. Um, <laughs> in some sense, right? If you go to the Latin Mass, you'll see the Gal Gal Gallican Articles. But um, since that has been restricted in so many parts of Catholicism at this recording, you may not be able to, you may not be exposed to it. All right. Quietism, false inactivity versus fatalism, which in a uh, modern sense we could see in Islam. Quietism from the Latin quies, passes, passes, passivity, passivity, passivity. In the broadest sense is a doctrine which declares that man's highest perfection consists in a sort of physical self-annihilation and a consequent absorption of the soul into the divine essence, even during the present life. In the state of quietude, the mind is wholly inactive. It no longer thinks or wills on its own account, but remains passive while God acts within it. Quietism is thus speaking a sort of false or exaggerated mysticism, which under the guise of the loftiest spiritual spirituality contains erroneous notions, which if consistently followed would prove fatal to morality. The definition is to morality. Not necessarily to the person. So you think a quiet person is never going to go out and eat. Maybe so. But really what will end up happening is that you can just, you'll eventually do whatever uh, suits your fancy. Right. Fatalism is in general the view which holds that all events in the history of the world and in particular the actions and incidents which make up the story of each individual life are determined by fate. The theory takes many forms, or rather its essential feature of an antecedent force rigidly predetermining all occurrences enters in one shape or another into many theories of the universe. Sometimes in the ancient world, fate was conceived as an iron necessity in the nature of things overruling and controlling the will and power of the gods themselves. Sometimes it was explained as an inexorable decree of the gods directing the course of the universe, and sometimes it was personified as a particular divinity, the goddess or goddesses of destiny. Their function was to secure that each man's lot or share or part should infallibly come to him. 
Yeah, it's interesting that that whole concept of uh, of both one with fatalism. You know, you have no. Um, let me see if I'm going to say this correctly. With quietism, you you surrender. Well, it's it's a false surrendering of the will, right? You 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 say that whatever it is that you're doing, you know, that you you come into, you are saying that you're surrendering your will to God, right? But really, you just are surrendering or your will to your appetite in a lot of ways. Um, and then in in fatalism, you know, it's it's the same sort of thing. In both instances, it's a misunderstanding of the human will and how the will engages itself with, you know, divine providence, I guess, um, in some in some aspect. You there's, you know, you you in fatalism you feel as though you have no agency. And in quietism, you feel like you are the primary agent by surrendering your will perfectly, and yet they're they're wrong uh, because you you can see how it can feel like in quietism when you just you know this this whole element of just shutting down your intellect or your your will to to the divine you know all is I don't know I, it's that's going to be an interesting thing of how um, Father Pierre, uh, Jean-Pierre de Cossade is able to inform the human person that an abandonment to divine providence is always an act of the will, like a, a, a perfect surrendering of the will, not, I don't know, to the exclusion of the appetite. I don't, I don't really know exactly how to articulate what I'm saying, but that that balance between fatalism where you can do nothing and quietism where you've surrendered everything, right? There's there's that balance in there where true abandonment to divine providence finds its niche. That's right. And we'll round this segment out with Muslim fatalism. Right. The orthodox view of Muslim, which has prevailed most widely among the followers of the prophet, has been that all good, and evil actions and events take place by the eternal decrees of God, which have been written from all eternity on the prescribed table. The faith of the believer and all of his good actions have been decreed and approved, whilst the bad actions of the wicked, though similarly decreed, have not been approved. Some of the Muslim doctors sought to harmonize this fatalistic theory with man's responsibility, but the oriental temper generally accepted with facility the fatalistic presentation of the creed, and some of their writers have appealed to this long past predestination, John Calvin, with uh, the Reformation and privation of free choice as a justification for the denial of personal responsibility. And then we get back to the, uh, you know, morality, you know problem. Whilst the belief in predestined lot has tended to make the Muslim nations lethargic and indolent, these are not my words, in respect to the ordinary industries of life, it has developed a recklessness and danger which has proved a valuable element in the military character of the people. And I thought that uh, New Advent being so bold to put that in there, um, I I commended them. I commend them for that. Well, I mean, it does. There there is no doubt that you know the, it, this goes back all the way to Aristotle, who saw in the in the 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 people of the, you know the Gauls that they were yippy yippy and spirited with no discipline. But then in the East, he saw those who are disciplined with no spirit. Uh, and I, I think in that you do see those two concepts of quietism and fatalism kind of finding their 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 way out of like of being acted upon in in reality. Maybe not so much the the over exuberance of the of the the Gauls as it were at the time, right? But there is something to what you had said about how in quietism, that tendency, when you when you surrender everything, you know, then of the intellect or the will, then 
it's only the appetite that can become exhibited. And, and I do think that we, that we, that you do see that. And yet divan, a demand, I'm sorry, divine abandonment, right? This abandonment to divine providence is something other. It's never a loss of either the spirit or the intellect or the will. It's a recognition that, that, and I think it goes to, um, uh, Father Jacques Philippe used that beautiful line uh, in um, his book, um, I've forgotten the name of it, but where he says, oh, uh, interior freedom, where he says, true freedom is choosing what you didn't originally choose, right? And and I think that there is some element of of maybe maybe the the, the spiritual teachings of Jean Pierre Cossard that are are coming through that element of the interior freedom in Jacques Philippe's book that allows us to understand how to navigate those those dangerous waters between uh, an over a belief that surrendering everything means that you become nothing or fatalism, which be, means that you believe that you can change nothing. That's that's not really what we're talking about in this abandonment, because in both of those instances, there's there's kind of a false understanding of how God wants to interact with his people. That's correct. That's which correct. is personal. Right. I mean, it's it's a personal and loving relationship. Yes, it sure is. Yes, it is. Let's pick that idea up in the next episode. Till then, my friends, be days and rock you.